was awesome. Now listen to this. Why? Now we got a few minutes here, so as a matter of fact, we got more than that. All right. So listen, let's just let's just get it all out one time. All right. This is a family meeting. We'll just throw it all out on the table. Why would God pick such? Why would he do that? Why tongues? Why languages? What does that mean? What, what, why would God pick languages to be the sign of power? In other words, languages I don't even know. Could I speak a language I don't know and that be a sign of power? Why would he do that? Turn to 1 Corinthians 14 for our first scripture. And then I'm going to give you three things that, of why I think and believe scripture teaches God picked it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I want to show you something about. And I'm going to read starting in verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I'll start reading in verse 9 and I'll read a few verses down. So it is with you. Unless you speak, utter by the tongue, words easy to be un understand, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking in the air, verse 10. There are, it may be, so many kinds of languages. Now, now watch verse 10 because I love what it says. But none of them is without significance. Leave it right there. There's not one language in the world that doesn't have meaning to it. This is what the word significance means. It means meaning. So, so let's, just, let's just go now to, to language of itself. Let's don't even go spiritual and religious. Let's just go natural for a moment. Languages have meaning. They carry meaning. This is why when I go on the mission field, it's so frustrating because I have to communicate in American English to Spanish hearing people. And even more frustrating is when we go to the islands of Cunayala and the islands on the other side of Panama and they speak Cuna. So now I've got to go English to Spanish to Cuna. And I'm telling you that is the most frustrating thing in the world. It's like, well, I'm so glad to be here today. Don't, don't they say la da da And by the time they get back to me, I'm like, ah, what was I saying? Uh Oh, oh yeah, it's great to be here today. And man, God's going to do a great thing. And Jesus, man, the power of the Lord is going to be here. Oh, and I mean, literally, it's like, oh, come on, come on. And then all of a sudden, it's like, I really want to tell you all something. This is going to really, it's, it's really funny. I hope it blesses all of you. There was one time that my children and I went to see a movie, and, and it was just, a, and, the, and I get a whisper in here, they don't understand movies. Oh, God, that's right. That won't work. That's in my language. There have been times when I first went on the mission field, the missionary or the pastor there, he would say, don't say that. They won't even get it. That's something, that's an idiom in your language. I have a friend of mine uh, back home that's a friend of our families, and they, they, she lived in Gabon and moved to America, but her, her native tongue is French. And so she would come over to our house and be talking to me and Robin, and she would talk, and her daughter would call, and all of a sudden she'd roll off in this beautiful French dialect. I mean, it just give you chills. I almost wanted to kiss Robin every time she started speaking. I was like, man, I mean, you're talking about just making a redneck feel ashamed. And she would speak, and I would say, now, why do you speak French to your daughter? You both speak English perfectly well. She goes, because, because it's more intimate. Because we were raised speaking French, so it's intimate. It's an intimate thing. And so, even in her Bible, she would read a French Bible. And I would say, well, why, you know, we're all up here in English. She goes, because when I read it in French, it has more meaning to me even though she knew English perfectly well. So we, we have to agree with Scripture that language carries meaning. Even in our own English language, you can go north, south, east, and west and pick idioms up that carry meaning that maybe people in the south don't even know. My family laughs at me that every time I talk to my dad, they go, wow, that is so crazy because as soon as you start talking to him, you go country. I'm like, hey, Dad, how are you? Good, good to see you. How's it going? Lord, show me anything? Everything going well over there? Good. And then I hang up and my kind of accent leaves. But it's just me and dad talking. 
And it's this intimate thing between father and son. I don't even know I'm doing it. The kids just start laughing. They go, we can always tell when it's your dad on the phone. You just talk differently to your dad. And I'm like, what? So let's all agree that language carries intimacy. That's the base nature of language. It's an intimate thing. So watch, grab this. So when God chose language to be the sign of power, there must be something about speaking in tongues that's going to touch intimacy. Intimacy. 